Frisbee too? Jackson King is all we got. Gamble more when you're growing up. I can't tell you how excited we are that you chose our institution to do research for your new book, Dr. Marcus. Well, that pleases me to hear, Dr. Victor. Please call me Paul. May I call you Daniel? Actually, no. I only let my friends call me Daniel. Paul, have a seat, please. Have you had a chance to... Oh, I finished it last night. Very, very impressive work, Doctor. A riveting read. We're lucky to have you here. Well, thank you. It's so nice of you to say. My only hope is that I can make a difference in the lives of your patients here. I have no doubt that you will. Though I must say, you certainly have your hands full with this group. I can assure you of that. Do you mind if I ask why these patients stood out to you? Not at all. Uh, the research I'm going to be doing here in support of a new book of mine, which is going to be addressing the fundamental difference between true mental illness and that of a created psychosis brought on by a patient's need to buffer their subconscious against some horrendous or horrific act that's been occurred upon them in the past. Or it could be hiding a much more sinister, darker issue, which is that they're lying and they're hiding some heinous, horrible act in the past that they're guilty of. Well, in that case, you've picked the cream of the crop. These patients suffer from a variety of mental health issues, probably the most severe I've ever seen. Everything from paranoid schizophrenia, extreme phobias, and delusional disorders, causing nearly all of them to commit some terrible crime. Which is why I chose them. Now, were they informed that I was doing research on a new book? Yeah, they've certainly been told. Whether they remember or not remains to be seen. Well, I believe that being honest with a patient is a way of unlocking their trust. Of course. As requested, all the patients have been moved into a joint holding area. And I've given specific instructions to Kyle and Shane. Kyle and Shane, they are? They're the orderlies I've assigned to assist you today. Kyle is my nephew. Mm. Not the brightest young man, but certainly capable of escorting the patients in and out of the office. Unfortunately, our operational budget has been cut by the board of directors again. So we do what we can with staffing these days. Well, when this new book comes out and it's a success, I will attribute your institution with all the research and hopefully that'll buffer some of your costs in the future. I have faith that it will. And I do hope the office we provided for the interviews will suffice. Due to the severe nature of mental illnesses of the patients you've selected, we have to keep them under maximum security. Well, I'm sure it'll be just fine. Well, uh, if there's anything else you need, just have one of the orderlies come find me. I'll be on my afternoon rounds. All right, thank you very much. Uh, enjoy the sessions, Doctor. Absolutely. I don't get any service. Dude, what the hell? Gentlemen. Yes? Could you bring in patient 110984, please? Yes, sir. For the record, patient 110984. 
Jill, 27 years old. She's been institutionalized for over 17 years. The patient claims her mother tried to murder her at the age of 10. The patient has been exhibiting behavior not unlike anorexic bulimia for the past 11 days and has refused water for the past 48 hours. Dr. Marcus, I don't think I'm supposed and to leave her. the order I'd like to see the patients in. Your name is? Kyle. Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. We'll be fine. Hello, Jill. My name's Dr. Marcus. What do you want? I'd like to help you. Why are you recording me? Oh, well, that's so that you can help me help you. Uncuff me? Well, I'm afraid I don't have the key. This bullshit. Why do you want to be out of your restraints? Is it so that you can pull out your IV, continue hurting yourself? Is that what you want to do? I'd rather be dead than be here anymore. Really? Hmm. I have something I'd like to try. <gasps> I can make this <gasps> Very quick. You know, and say that you lunged at me after I let you out of your restraints. And I had to defend myself. And you know what? Here's the best part. Nobody's gonna give a damn. So you just sit there nice and calm, and I'll be over in a second. Just proves that you don't want to die. I don't want to be here anymore! Well, maybe I can help you with that. Tell me what happened. Tell me what happened with your mother, with your mommy. She was trying to kill me. How? You already know what happened. You have everything right there in those folders. All right. Look, I can send you back with a recommendation for electroshock therapy. And young lady, if you think your stay here has been trying, believe me, it can get a hell of a lot worse. What do you want from me? I want the truth, not what's in the files. I want... I want what you remember. Will you help me? I can try. But first, you're going to have to... Open up, be honest with me, tell me the truth, and I will know if you're not. <sighs> this is going nowhere. They say I'm crazy. But I'm not. All right. Go on. I love my mom. She was a good mom. Until, uh... Until she started seeing it. It. Seeing it.
Honey. Why are you in the bed? Jill, did you wet the bed? Why did you kill somebody you claimed to love? I had no choice. 
Did you hate your mother? That's a messed up question. You know the answer to, huh? I want to go back to myself. Where was your father during all this? Hmm? He wasn't there. He was... <laughs> he was out with my sister, Katie. <sighs> Did you ever wonder who the real monster here is? You want everyone to think of you as this poor, helpless victim who had no choice. Screw you! In fact, you're actually a cold-blooded, sociopathic killer with an electric complex who wanted mommy out of the way so she could have daddy all to herself. No. Isn't that right? No. Mm -hmm. no. Were you eventually going to kill your sister, too? No. Were you? you Patient one zero two five seven eight. John Doe, estimated to be in his late fifties, was found wandering in the woods wearing nothing more than a bathrobe. John Doe or JD as they call him here claims to have no recollection of who he is. Well, at least this one won't give us any problems, huh? <laughs> yeah. He's a shy, quiet type. Isn't that right, J.D.? He has no known family, and authorities were unable to establish his identity through fingerprints or dental records. He was admitted to this facility five years ago after several violent encounters due to a recurring nightmare and an unexplainable fear of plastic wrap. Patient's loaded. JD here stays big 24 7. Wonderful. Look, get him out of here. Bring him back when he's more coherent. Hmm? We can't do that, sir. That's Dr. Victor's orders. This patient is violent. Right here, you know. <laughs> What's your name? J.D. J.D., do you know which, which city you're in? They won't tell me. <laughs> oh, that was wonderful. All right, all right. Go on, get out of here. Leave him here. Go on, go on. Get the door on the way out. All right, J.D., I am... Dr. Marcus. What are you doing? I'm recording you. Do you have a problem with that? <sighs> like I have a choice. <laughs> uh, okay, can, can you uh, put that away, please? Put, please. Is there a problem? <laughs> God, the charts are right on. You do have a problem with plastic wrap. Can you put that away, please? Mm. Here. 
right, look, 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 look. I'm wrapping it up, putting it away. <gasps> thank you. Th th thank you. All right, J.D., you are in the Spring Valley Mental Institution. Do you remember being brought here? Uh, I uh, only remember one thing. A ah, good one. Why should I tell you? Hmm. Well, if I'm going to help you, I have to know what you check. No, no. Yes. No, no. You don't remember who you are, where you come from. Why don't we start with this little problem you have with plastic wrap? Mm -hmm. I, I was on vacation in the UK, and he killed me. What? He what? He killed me. Who? I don't know who he was or why he did it. But in the dream, I could see and feel and hear everything.
cough. Excuse me! Oi! That's no bloody way to talk to children! Audi's in the garage. Excuse me, aren't you? I did, oh, sorry. Didn't you go to Drummond Prep School? No. You did, didn't you? You did. 1997. I'm Alan. Alan Fletcher. I was a, I was a prefect while you were there. I haven't seen you since then. You never really did fit in. How are you, anyway? That's a brilliant costume, by the way. That's, it's genius. Terry, tell me, come look at this. Look at all that blood. Oh, that is an amazing costume, mate. <laughs> you meant to be a killer or something, right? I am a killer, yes. <laughs> and that's the body in the bag, is it? Latest victim type of thing. Brand new. <gasps> brilliant. Fucking brilliant. <laughs> Shit, seriously, don't you? You've got an actual body in there or something. <laughs> Help him, dickhead. <sighs> so heavy. Anyway, what's on the agenda tonight? You've been to a party? No. Well, well, listen, we're heading to this pretty Swiss loft party just down the road here. I mean, our costumes are a bit last minute, but yours, we would really make an entrance to this thing. I know it's late, but you will pop in for just one, won't you? Our pal Jack. I mean, he's got to see this. He's so into his horror shit, he's going to love it. I'd rather not get sidetracked. Uh, mate, 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 don't be so bloody boring. Please, just, just one drink. We'll be really, really quick. We'll be back on the streets killing in no time. Shan't <laughs> <laughs> stay long. Yes. Well, this way, then. Killer! <laughs> no, Terry, I think that's racist. How's that racist? Well, it's just... My mum's clean as black, so I know about this stuff. Yeah, well, your mum's racist. She's a bit racist. Costume, mate. Nice face paint. Let me guess. American Psycho! <laughs> hey, Babs, pour us around to the reagent, man. I want to do a shot with the best costume in the house. <gasps> Fuck me! Are, are you responsible for this? Of course. <laughs> the detail, man. I could just about make out that nasty wound, and oh, the blood is perfect. 
<laughs> You've got some serious talent right here. Aha! Guys, grab one. A toast. To our newfound friend. Finally, someone who appreciates Halloween as much as I do. Let's raise hell! Bow, bow, bow. G and T, please. Coming up. Now, that is a brilliant costume you came up with. Wine, please. Hmm? Oh. Well, it's not really a costume. Right. You're right, sorry. More of a prop, isn't it? And the suit is great. Sort of a mental James Bond sort of thing. I'm Maggie. Hello, Maggie. just brilliant. I mean, how long did it take you to stuff that thing? Well, it's more of a roll, really, like a pig in a blanket. But it is just brilliant. I've just never seen anything like it before. Not that well done, anyway. I'm sure there are plenty of us. Best night of the year for it. It's much harder to go walking around with a dead body on a regular evening than it is on Halloween. nonetheless <laughs> just have to know what you're doing of course mm. cheers cheers <laughs> all right all you ghouls and all you monsters out there hope you're enjoying yourself so far tonight it's spooky spooky night look guys i'm really sorry but we've just got 10 minutes left behind the bar tonight just 10 minutes left oh, boo! <gasps> I must be going now. What? No! You can't go, it's Halloween. Jack will be having an after party. Jack! You're having an after party, right? No. Um, uh, yeah? Yeah, sure. Yes. A few of you can come back to mine for a nightcap. Brilliant. No, really, I must be going now. Why? You haven't got work in the morning, have you? <laughs> I've got work right now. I need to bury that thing before 3 a.m. or I don't get the bounty. The bounty? Oh, a prize. Like a Halloween scavenger hunt. That's what you meant earlier when you said there's plenty of us doing it. OMG, I'm so fit. <laughs> well, we can help you. It sounds like so much fun. Yeah, I don't. Come on, guys, we've got to do this. Mate, of course we'll help you bury the body and get the fucking prize. But at least we can do. Mate. Oh. To the woods! Yeah! <laughs> to the woods! <laughs> This will do. Stay here. Mm -hmm. Where else are we? We're driving more than an hour. Right, gents. Follow the trail and you'll spot a bonfire. Get it lit, drop him in the hole and cover him. I'll come and join you shortly to finish things up. Yeah. Ah! 
Dick. Dick. <laughs> All good? Yeah. Yeah. Feel the weight on this little bugger. Wow. Yeah, that's really got some clout to it. There you go. Me! <laughs> All done here. So, Maggie, what do you fancy doing? Did you get your prize? So to speak. Do you fancy coming back to mine for a bit? Only if you're sure. I wouldn't want to keep you up any longer. I'm sure I've got one more in me tonight. No problem, officer. Trouble with the van? Oh, no, we're fine. We literally just headed out here to uh, get away from the city lights for a while. We're just heading home now. Had a bit of a mad one. I see. Yeah, well, make sure you do. We've had lots of nasty reports this evening. Don't want any more. You two be on your way, and uh, you make sure she gets home all right. Absolutely, officer. Right. Take care now. Prick. For it. Yeah, mate. <laughs> Fucking hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> Some bloke knobbing his bird. Fair play to him, actually. She was quite fit, you know. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, this is so much better than last year when we dressed up as priests. I fucking love Halloween. <laughs> mm. So let me get this straight. You have this recurring nightmare where you're murdered. Wrapped in this plastic, carted all over town, and yet you could see, feel, and hear absolutely everything that was going on. Yes. It's absolutely amazing. You know what I think? I think you're a lying, manipulative miscreant who's given up on life and decided to live in this institution where you can get three squares and a free bed every night. You are a pathetic waste of human life, and I'm going to make sure that you live in this self-made nightmare of yours for the rest of your life. No. 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 Don't touch that. I want the patient to remain wrapped in plastic. Doctor's orders. Get him out of here. Bring in patient one zero zero one seven four. Born in Reykjavik, Iceland, 
Gabrielle fled to the United States in a hope of avoiding prosecution for the murder of a woman she believed her American fiance was having an affair with. Upon her capture, her fiance's attorney struck a plea deal with Icelandic authorities to keep her stateside with the condition that she stay in a maximum security psychiatric institution for the remainder of her life. Well, she's been in this facility for over 10 years now. And Gabrielle continues to deny the charges, claiming they were attacked by zombies. After a detailed observation by Dr. Victor, it has been concluded that she suffers from severe bipolar disorder, depression, and is prone to extreme and often violent outbursts. She claims to suffer from a recurring dream of a so-called zombie attack. Come on, get her up. You gotta go. Gabrielle, please, have a seat. Are you wasting your time, Dr. Marcus? She hasn't spoken a word of English in years. <laughs> really? Why do you believe this is such a waste of your time? Hmm? What do you well, first, I'd like you to just have a seat. So why don't you just sit down, hmm? Gentlemen, I won't need you any further. I'll call you if I do. Yes, I wrote those. Are you impressed? Kvalte. I want to help you. And I know you understand what I'm saying, Gabrielle. Not that any book. But that's not what I can smell. True. I'm writing a book, and along the way, I might be able to help you. I really do want to help you. Nobody believes you. Hmm? Yes, Ahmed. You let us see it, Hite. Maybe if you told me what happened, I could help you find peace in all this. I'm going to turn on the camera now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's gone. You think I've got on Saturday, Minka?
Það er allt í lagi. Það er allt í lagi. Hvaðu? Hvar eru þau? Líkt er þetta. You are a sick, evil, jealous person who brutally murdered a young lady because you thought she was having an affair with your fiance. And on top of all that, you want everyone to believe that a zombie bit her face off. Go to hell. Oh, look at that. The murderer speaks English. You liar! I you said you were helping! Next. Originally from New Zealand, Sarah has been institutionalized since she was 15 years old. Her parents moved to her stateside when she was 12 in hopes of getting her the best mental health care possible. After attempting suicide, her parents thought it best that she be admitted here. She often wakes up screaming in the middle of the night and keeps asking for her shovel. The settlers are kicking in. Dude, I'm sick of this job. She tried to bite me. Stop being such a pussy, OK? Steve, are you boys ready for me at a walk? Fuck it, let's do this. Where the fuck is my bloody shovel? Hey, watch your mouth. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> Leave us. It's all right. I'll, I'll be okay. I'll be fine, I'll be fine. Sarah, I am Dr. Marcus. Hmm. I gathered that. I'd like to ask you a few questions. About the murder? To start with, yes. Ludicrous, you know. I was put away for the murder of my best friend. You denied doing that? My friend was unhappy. She committed suicide. Yeah, but you buried the body. 
before she did it, she asked me to hide her away afterwards. It's that simple. I was just trying to be a good friend. So I told my parents. They decided to move us stateside, hoping that I could get some help. But I don't need any help. I didn't do anything. But I bet it'd make a juicy chapter for that book you're going to write, huh? Does it bother you that I'm writing a book? Your fame is mine, isn't that right, Doc? Sir, I'm here to help you. <laughs> Why don't you tell me what really happened? It was just another day. Well, <laughs> I guess it wasn't exactly the average day in the life of a 12-year-old. <laughs> Well, what do we say? Let's just tell her it's going to be OK. Well, we don't know that. I don't know. I've never had to deal with a situation like this. Well, neither have I. Good. What are you doing there, honey? Making a card for Vic. Oh, that's... that's wonderful. Do you think she'll sleep with the angels like Nana? What? No. Absolutely not, honey. No. I found one, and it's really nice, but it's thirty seven dollars. Here you go. Here's $2. Go and get yourself another one. <laughs> it was $3. Right. <sighs> Here you go. Here's 5 Give me back my two. I only made $12 today. Fuck! I'm sorry. It's okay, honey. Laser fuck! That'll be two dollars, Daddy. The police still can't tell me anything. What do you think? Well, I, I think it'll be fine. Just fine. You can't give up hope, Jenny. How's Sarah coping? Well, her best friend is missing, so... Clive! Oh, she is? <laughs> I'm sorry, Jenny. <laughs> Come here, Jenny. Look what you've done. Oh, it wasn't me. <laughs> mm -hmm. I got it. Did you hear that? Vic? You must be so tired. Now you can finally sleep.
Why'd you do it? I mean, if you're trying to help your friend, then why, why try and kill yourself? Guilt? I mean, fear of spending the rest of your life in an institution like this? You're the doctor. You tell me. Uh, everyone else around here might be buying your smug little act, <laughs> but I'm not. Get bent, you swap. Now we're really getting somewhere. Aren't no, we? we're not. Gentlemen, please. I'm going to send you back to the holding tank. You keep living your sorry little existence, but me, I'm still going to have a good day. Huh? Get her out of here. Where's my bloody shovel? I want to shovel up his arse. Get fuck off me. Doctor's going to be sorry when I find my shovel. It's time to see the doctor, Jess. Jessa hasn't spoken a word since she was committed to this institution over seven years ago, when she was found guilty of killing her mother and her sister. She claims an evil spirit possessed her. After repeatedly telling this story to multiple doctors, she simply stopped speaking. I don't know why you picked her, sir. The girl's a mute or something. Yeah, but she kind of uh, talks with her hands. Which is why I need her out of those restraints. Come on. Come on. Well, if she does one knock, that means yes or she likes it. And uh, two knocks means no or she hates it. That's pretty much all we've been able to get from her so far. Thank you, Kyle. That's very informative. Jess, uh, do you know who I am? Good, good, good. I'm here to help you. Now, I'd like to try a little hypnotherapy. See if I can't relax you in. Get that inner voice of yours that can come out. Have you ever been hypnotized before? Do you mind if I try? Jessa, I need an answer. Look, I know you're frightened that you've got things that haunt you. But I'm not frightened. I can help you with that. But you have to let me. Please. you to just concentrate on this crystal. Come on now, breathe. Take a deep breath. Go inside. That's it. Go inside. Free up that voice that's talking to you. Let it come out.
takes a real sick person to do something like that to a dog. Sorry, girls. Norman's in doggy heaven now. Was it you? She made me do it. The bad lady? Jess said there's no such She's thing. She's getting worse. Wait. Don't you believe me? I'll be home by 11 at the latest, and eat before it gets cold. Yeah. Jessa, sweetie, you listen to your sister, okay? And go to bed on time. Come lock up behind me. If she seems sad, there's ice cream in the fridge. My girl always has it together. What are you going to do to Sally? Ow! Sally is you. And this is the bad lady. Doesn't look like her. See, I think the bad lady, she tied herself to you. And all we have to do is untie her, like a shoelace. But what if she doesn't want to let go? We'll make her. That's what she looks like. Bowl of reflection, stones of protection. May the reason of our harm feel the power of this charm. Powers of the witches rise, course unseen across the skies. Hear me beckon, hear my plea. Spirit, spirit, I summon thee. Pass me that candle. Sarah? Close your eyes. 
demon who dwells in slivers of night, uncloak your shadows to my sight. Guardians of the ancient towers, grant me now thy sacred powers. Let this child be set free. Such is my will, I banish thee. Let this child be set free. With all my might, I banish thee. Keep going! I banish thee! I banish thee! She's gone. Hey. You all right? Yeah, I'm just glad you're home. Tough night for both of us then. You should get to bed. I want to stay in here a while. Well, don't wake her. I tried to stop her! <laughs> Mommy made the same sounds as Norman. I wonder what sounds you'll make. Don't, don't do that. Leave her alone. But she she could hurt herself. She's not gonna hurt herself. I want her to come out of this on her own. What did I tell you? Whoa. Well, that's a first. What do you know? That was absolutely amazing, young lady. 
It was an incredible first session. Now, I do not want her sedated. I want her to be left to herself. I want her to be able to come to terms with this, come to terms with being a psychotic killer. No! 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 It's over. It's over. It's okay. It's okay. Time to go. Damon, you're up. Damon believes in vampires. He always has, always will, no matter what the doctors tell him. He was arrested after hiring someone to kill several people who he thought were vampires. I wouldn't mess with this one, Doc. Mm. You gentlemen can go. I'll call you if I need you. Job again, Dr. Marcus? You don't waste time, do you? They told me about you. They said you were really interested in hearing our stories. It's true. Actually, tell my story. Anyone will listen. The problem is none of the other doctors believe me. Well, I'm not like other doctors. She has a child. I used to love vampire stories. In your case, it intrigued me. So I'm going to ask you, do vampires really exist? Hmm? Hear me if you like. And I know the truth. I've been following certain people until I was sure. I hired someone to kill them. Do you know the vampires walk the dead? And they don't turn into vamps. And they only feast on blood when they're hungry. That's fascinating. Mm -hmm. You learn all kinds of things, but you track them all over. People like you put me away. <laughs> Idiots. They have no idea of the evil that walks in this world. So a bad couple of things. Somebody believed you, didn't they? Why don't you tell me about this man you hired to kill the vampires? Ah, it took some time. Once I showed him, he believed.
D.I. Collins re-enters the room. Interview resumes. The suspect has refused to offer his name or address for the third time. I'm going to call you John. Is that all right? John? We found you wandering through the station. We were worried because you were someone we wanted to talk to. Know why that is? Janet Gray. Did she break your heart? Because you broke hers. How did that make you feel? She was just a girl. But Reggie? Reggie was scum. Dealer, pimp, Chelsea fan. That's three strikes right there. You took it a bit too far, though. That's a fair, you fucking muppet! Some people will give you a pat on the back for that. But this... Acid in the bath. That isn't normal behaviour, John. That is just not fucking on. I hunted her. Four missing girls, all her friends. No coincidence. He killed seven prostitutes, addicts, homeless. And they've been at it for decades. Dig up their garden. Count the bones of their children you find. I know this won't stop you for long. Sorting the truth from the fiction took a while. But removing the heart, decapitation, holy water, those methods work. They couldn't exist on their own. They needed protection to survive, someone to keep watch. You're confused, John. You're scared and confused. A confused man wouldn't have watched you for three months. He wouldn't have snuck into this room an hour ago. A confused man wouldn't have a stake in his hands. for the murder of ordinary people. He loved them to me. 
that surprise you? We weren't finished. Killing vampires. Precisely. Uh, there's another one out there. The main one. And I won't stop till I hunt it down and kill it. Gentlemen, would you join us, please? You know, David, I have to tell you of all my patients, you've been the most fascinating. It's been an absolute pleasure meeting you. Pleasure is all mine. Doctor. My shovel, Doctor. Ah! Ah! Oh, you 
Dwayne. You know who I am. <laughs> we sure do, Doctor. <laughs> we sure do. Yeah, there, there are no such thing as vampires. There, there just, there just isn't. I'm not a vampire. He's having hallucinations. He's drawing you people into it. Mm, nice try, but I'm not buying it. I'm not a vampire. Hold him down. <laughs> this won't take long. I'm not. Ah, I'm not. I'm not. Yes, we know who you are. Thank you, General. Keys. You're not a renowned author. You're not a doctor. You're Daniel Marcus, patient 050980. You've been a patient at this facility for over 30 years. You were admitted after being found guilty of murdering your mother, aunt, uncle and cousin while on a skiing trip. Your attorney managed to be placed here in our care after an insanity plea. <laughs> oh. Oh. We've discussed this before, Daniel. It's Dr. Victor. Only my friends call me Paul. We're not friends. Another bad dream. Well, hopefully we can get you to see the truth about what you did and the delusions and nightmares will eventually stop. It pains me to leave you here in a single cell, but with all your recent outbursts, you've left me little choice. The other patients and even some of the staff are frightened of you. I'd, I'd like to move you back into the main ward, but uh, I'm gonna need you to help me help you. I'm gonna give you one more chance to tell me the truth. Take me back to where it began. Would you, would you help me? I would hurt anybody, I would hurt my family. I wouldn't hurt my mother. I wouldn't hurt her. Daniel, Venta, Venta. Mama. Har du inte lärt dig någonting? När jag säger stanna, då stannar du. Ja. Du kan inte bara sticka sådär och bli skiträdd. Men bilen är ju övergiven. Varför lämnar man en bil här?
Jag kan inte. Förlåt, jag, jag visste inte att det var bensin i. Jag tror du inte? Du kan ju det här. Ska vi klara det så måste vi vara försiktiga, det vet du. Ja, jag vet. Var var du någonstans? Du sa att vi skulle hålla ihop. Ja, jag vet. Det ska vi också. Snyggt med nycklarna. Tänkte du köra ifrån mig, eller va? Ja, men jag tänkte. Jag kör bättre än vad du gör. <laughs> Nej, nu tycker jag du är lite kaxig, Fritzboy. Jag ska köra. Kom. Kommer vi hela vägen? Nej, uh, inte riktigt. Men en bit. Gå bak. Kolla. Tänker du på? Hur många dagar kommer vi ta? Hur nu var bilen? Jag vet inte riktigt. Vi kan inte köra närmsta vägen. Nej. Hon har inte bitit det, du är inte skadad. Du måste hjälpa mig, hjälp mig nu. Ta den. Hjälp mig!
what it hurt my father. <laughs> well, I was hoping we would make some progress, Danny, but uh, you just want to tell outrageous stories. They're all true. They're all true. You really expect me to believe your tall tales about serial killers, demons, vampires, ghosts, zombies? The truth is, you murdered multiple people in cold blood, starting with your own family. Instead of taking responsibility for it, you'd rather make up fairy tales. Well, you might have everybody else fooled, but you're nothing but a liar who faked his mental state of health to avoid the death penalty. You can stay down here for the rest of your miserable life for all I care. You know what? I am still gonna have a good day. Patients need me. I only let my friends call me Daniel. You can help me help you. I'm still gonna have a good day. Come back! Come back! Come back.